In this lesson, we're going to cover how to place in fillet and groove welds. Groove welds sometimes are also called gap welds. The file that we're going to use for this lesson is called weld.iam, and it can be found in your Chapter 11 Exercise folder. To start off by placing in a weld bead, in this case it's going to be a physical weld where it will also have properties, and it will appear in the graphics window as a physical weld. I'm going to go back and start off by making the weld environment active, so I'm going to double click on welds in the browser. Then from the weldment features panel, I'm going to go on down, and I'm going to start by placing in a fillet weld. So we'll start off the fillet weld tool. Then in the fillet weld dialog box, you'll see that it's broken into a couple different selections. So for the first face, in this case what I want to do is I want to place in a fillet weld right between the chamfer that we've placed in here. So I'm going to select the top face of the plate. And then for chain number two, I'm going to go back and select that option. And then I'm going to select the weld prep that we placed in a previous lesson. And you'll see that I'm getting a preview. And what I really like to do is place in a three millimeter fillet weld, and you'll see that I'm getting the preview, so I know exactly what's going to be happening there. So if I would change that to a 6 millimeter fillet, you can see that it's going a little bit larger than what we did for the weld prep. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Apply, and let's see what happens. And you can see that Inventor is airing out. It doesn't know how to go back and create that fillet weld, because it doesn't know exactly where to terminate. So I'm going to go back and edit that. And for selection number two, I'm going to pick on that option again. And I'm also going to add the front face. So now Inventor will know exactly where to terminate that fillet. So as I spin it around, you can see it's exactly what I was looking for. So let's take a look at the back face here. So let's start up the fillet weld tool again. And for the first selection, I'm going to select the top face of the plate again. And for the second face, let's select the chamfered well prep. And let's change it down to a 3 millimeter weld for leg number one. And you see that we do have other options. We can go back and define leg number two. You can also define a contour. So in, in this case, let's go back and do a convex. And then we can go back and determine how big that convex should be. Let's place it in at 0 0.05 millimeters. For the next section, we can also go back and determine the length. So let's place that in at 5 millimeters. And we can also determine the pitch. So let's go back and place that in at 10 millimeters. So we can also determine down here at the bottom portion how that leg length measurement is going to actually take place here. So you see our two different options. I'm just going to keep the default here. So let's go ahead and click OK. And you see that our weld has been placed in. Now we can go back and edit these as needed. So by expanding the weld option and in the beads folder, you'll see that each of these is appearing as their own feature. To edit them, I just simply right click, Edit Feature. And then I can go back and make a change to that if needed. So let's go back and change that to 15. Click OK. And our spacing has been adjusted accordingly. Let's take a look at placing in a groove weld. So on the tube that we have here, we placed in our weld prep. So what I'd like to do is place in a weld bead that's going to go directly down. So just like we did with the fillet weld, for face number one, I'm going to select the top plane of the plate. And then for face number two, I'm going to select that chamfered prep that we have. Now for the groove weld, I'm going to select the fill direction. And this is going to tell the weld which direction to go down. So in this case, I'm just going to pick the cylindrical face. And that's going to give Inventor the direction to go. You can also have Inventor place in a weld symbol right in the graphics window if you would like. So you can go back and designate the information that you would like with that weld. So for our example here, I'm going to uncheck that, and I'm going to document this when we go back and create our drawing views of a weldment. So now let's go ahead and click on OK. And you see that our groove weld was placed all the way around our cylinder. 
Now that that information has been filled in, if needed, you could also go back and place in a fillet weld. And in this case, I'm going to select again the top plane of that plate. And then for number two, I could come back here and select our two faces here. And you'll notice I selected the face of the groove weld. So let's change the spacing here. I'm just going to remove that. And in this case, let's just take it back to a straight flat fillet. Go ahead, click OK. And our fillet has been placed accordingly. One last item that I want to show here with the fillet weld. Again, start up the fillet weld tool. So for face number one, when I go back and select this face right here, you'll see that it's only selecting that top plane. If you check the chain option, it's going to take all of the tangent faces along with it. So let's spin the model around. You see that all of the faces have been selected for me. And then for number two, I'm just going to select the front face of that plate. And let's change it to a two millimeter. Click OK. And the weld has been placed all the way around all of the tangent faces. After placing the welds, you may be interested to know how much weight was added by placing in those welds. So via the browser here, I'm going to right click on the welds option, right click, go ahead and select on properties. And then from the physical tab, again, this is where we can go back and designate the material. So we did this in this case with steel mild, click on update, and we can see how much mass we've added to our assembly.